because it happens to everybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you say. It's happening. Hey guys, it's Jesse Hilgenberg and welcome to another Ask Jesse. Today's questions came in from Instagram and as always, keep the questions coming with the hashtag Ask Jesse. I pick my favorite questions each week that I think will help the most people. That's you. So let's get to it. Today's question is from Deanna. Deanna asks, how do you get your gym mojo back when you've completely let it go? I've gained even more weight back than when I started. All right, Deanna, this is a great question. I'm so happy to be addressing it because it happens to everybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you say, it's happening. I actually have a little bit of fear around that right now just because I'm 37 weeks pregnant. That means that my training has really slowed down and it also means that once I do have the baby, um, I'm gonna be out of the gym for six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks. I'm not really sure how I'll feel, but as soon as I'm cleared, it's gonna be really hard and challenging for me to get my gym mojo back too. So um, these are some tools that I use that I want to share with you and that I really do think can help you when you feel like you've lost you know, all of your motivation and you're actually worse off than when you started, whether or not that's the case for you. It's just hard to get back into the gym when you've been off the wagon for a little while. One of my main tips is to write down your goals. Write them down big and small. Don't forget the small ones because those little ones are the ones that are more attainable quickly and they'll help keep you motivated to keep going toward those bigger goals. So for example, if you have a goal to lose 30 pounds, don't just write down lose 30 pounds. I want you to be detailed and make those smaller goals happen. The smaller goals can be cut out soda, even cutting down soda if you're having several per day. Another idea would be to start tracking your daily sugar grams. Doing that can keep you on track to a full-blown macro tracking awesome lifestyle, but going from zero tracking to trying to adopt a macro tra tracking lifestyle it can seem really overwhelming at first, and that's one of those bigger goals to track macros for life, all of your macros and all of your micros. Um, micro, macronutrients are your proteins, carbs, and your fats, and your micros are, you know, like vitamins and minerals and stuff, but they can also be fibers and sugars. And you don't want to go from tracking nothing to tracking all of those things. You're gonna, you're gonna lose your motivation. You're gonna get overwhelmed. You're not gonna be able to handle all of it. That big of a change right off the bat. So start small. Really, start small, start with sugar. Don't even think about proteins, carbs, and fats for now. If, if losing 30 pounds is your goal, um, sugar can be a big culprit for that. So just make sure that you um, track your sugar all day. It's an easy one to track. The sugar grams are on everything as long as you're you know, creating your own foods and keeping track of stuff. So just add up those sugar grams, give yourself a goal. If you think you're eating 100 grams of sugar a day right now, take it back to 75 grams and track it and meet 75 grams. And then the next week or a few days later, take it back to 60 grams of sugar and try to reach that goal. And then you're gonna get into a habit of having lower sugar, not no sugar, but having 30 to 40 grams of sugar a day. Once you start nailing that and your body readjusts from going from 120 grams of sugar a day to 40, 30 grams of sugar a day, your body will readjust, you'll get used to that, and then you can add on tracking other things from there, such as proteins and carbs and fats and things like that. So another idea to get back on track, and this is my favorite one, is community. Find one or more people that will truly, truly support you. I can't tell you how derailing it was when I was first starting out on my fitness journey, when I had chicken breasts hiding in my purse at restaurants so I could add protein to a healthy salad and a side of rice at a restaurant so I could be social and go out to dinner with everybody. But the eye rolls that I would get from some friends and some family members when I would do that, they were so disappointing to me, especially since I wasn't even making a thing out of it. Literally, incognito, hidden purse, chicken magic when no one was looking. It's really sad that you can get eye rolls for trying to eat healthy, but no one eye rolls when you order a chicken pot pie and have dessert. I hate that, and I'm really sorry that that happens so much. So anyway, find your people. I don't care if it's your one coworker that will walk around the building with you drinking protein shakes until the office donuts in the break room are gone and it's safe to come back to the office, <laughs> or if it's a giant community of women like Jesse's Girls who will chat with you all day and all night anytime that you need somebody to relate to. Anyway, I hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching Ask Jesse today. Don't forget to comment below with any questions about this topic. 
I'll respond to all of your comments as always. And please, please subscribe and share this with anyone who you think that this would help. I know it'll help a lot of people. Don't forget to go to jessiefitness.com and check out all of my Jessie's Girls training programs and keep asking me your awesome Ask Jessie questions. See ya.